Inside this video right here, I'm going to share with you exactly when to use epinephrine, whether it's BLS or ALS. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach here, back at you with a brand new video. If you're watching this video right now, be sure to hit the like button down below, smash that like button down below, and go ahead and hit subscribe as well, and tap that notification bell. Now, today we're talking about epinephrine, so let's dive into it. So what we're talking about here first is we've got to understand when to use epinephrine, but here is a major rule in EMS. I'm going to actually put it right here so you always remember it. You never are allowed to use a drug unless you understand it. So a lot of people ask me, I, I need help with drugs. If you understand what a drug does, it comes naturally, it comes easy on when to use it and when not to use it and even the special considerations, okay? So let's first learn about what it is, then we're gonna figure out when to use it exactly for BLS and ALS. So the first piece here, what is epinephrine? So there's some, some big words here. You may have never heard them before. I'm gonna break them down right now. Here it is, the first one. You may have heard epinephrine, that drug, is a sympathomimetic. Now let's break this word down, okay? So sympathomimetic. What does that sound like to you? Well, we know that the sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight. So did you know in the body, naturally occurring in the body, epinephrine is released when we turn on that sympathetic nervous system. So when we give the drug, the chemical, the medication, adrenaline, epinephrine in the body through an IV or IM or however we're giving it, it's a sympathomimetic. It mimics. That sounds like mimics, right? It mimics the naturally occurring epinephrine what happens when it's actually released in the body. So I'll say it again. When you give epinephrine in the body, you're gonna get a sympathetic nervous system-like response. So what does that look like? Well, here's what it looks like. So here's the mechanism of action right here. Epinephrine acts on three, how many? Three main receptors in the body. The first one is the alpha-1 receptor. When epinephrine goes in the body, it goes up to the alpha-1 receptor and says, I'm gonna turn you on, click. And then you get this response right here, vasoconstriction. What is vasoconstriction? Well, vaso sounds like the vasculature, right? Constriction is like, okay, think of a, think of a snake constricting, right? There it is. So vasoconstricting, by default, if I'm narrowing your arteries, I'm increasing the pressure throughout the vasculature in your body, right? So what does that mean? That means is your blood pressure gets increased. Okay, now remember that. Your blood pressure gets increased. Remember that for later, okay? Now let's go to beta one. Now beta one, we're gonna increase the heart rate and the contractility. Oh, we got another big word here. A new word, a medical word. Contractility, okay. So our heart has to contract, right? It beats, it goes and beats and beats, right? Great. Well, what we're talking about here at contractility is the strength of those contractions. So here's how you break down contractility. If I say this gentleman's heart over here has very weak, very low contractility, what I'm saying is the strength of that man's contractions sucks, <laughs> isn't very good, okay? If I say that heart right there has some strong contractility, the heart has strong contractions, right? The heart is more robust, it's doing its job better, okay? So it's going to increase the contractility of the heart, thus increasing the heart rate of the patient, okay? So alpha-1, we know increase their blood pressure, Beta-1 increases their heart rate. Okay, what about beta-2? Another big word here, bronchodilation. Okay, well, everyone learned about the bronchioles and the bronchial tree in the lungs. 
those are like the highways and the road of the lungs. Right. So with that being said, if we dilate them and we relax the lungs, we can breathe better. Hey, check this out. When you're in fight or flight and the sympathetic nervous system is turned on naturally in your body, all of this stuff happens. So when you give epinephrine, that's why it's a sympathomimetic, this is what you get. So now we know what it does. It increases your blood pressure, increases your heart rate, it opens your lungs. So that's exactly when we wanna give epinephrine. Now let's go through a few different case studies and a few different diseases and things we might see in the field so we know when to give this and how to give it and what type to give. Here we go. So now that we understand what epinephrine does, now we have to understand, well, what are, there's many types of epi that we can give from BLS to ALS. And there's also different ways we can give it and doses and how does that work? What type of medical emergency may we give it for? That's what we're getting into right now is when to use epi. Okay, so the first thing I want you to know is there's different types of epi. I'm going to put that in the screen here first and show you what they look like. Then we're going to dive into the other stuff. So first thing I'm going to pop in the screen right here is a epi pen. Think of this as BLS, basic life support epi. There's an epi pen right here. On the screen right here, I want you to, this is going to be 1 to 10,000 epinephrine. Think about this as your cardiac arrest epi on the screen here, okay, our boxed epi, okay? And then finally on the screen here, you can see the ampule here of epinephrine, 1 to 1,000. Think about that as your ALS respiratory epi right here, okay? I'm going to explain more about that, but I want to first show you what it looks like. Okay, now here we go. So now I want to talk about the BLS right here. So when would BLS epi be used. When we have anaphylaxis, for example, a patient with hives, a patient with wheezing, right? A patient with nausea vomiting. Remember, anaphylaxis is two or more body systems being affected. Skin's one, hives, wheezing, GI, nausea vomiting. There's three right there. That's anaphylaxis, okay? Now remember, the farther you go along with anaphylaxis, your blood pressure at some point is going to be under 90 systolic, okay? So that's anaphylaxis. So the main use for the EpiPen and why patients carry them in their purse or their backpack when they're outside, maybe they're at a sporting game, maybe they're camping, right? It's because they have a known allergy that's very sensitive. Could be a bee sting, could be a food allergy. They might have a certain allergy, a medication allergy, whatever it may be. It could be a certain thing uh, in the air, for example. There's many different reasons why people have allergies and have those reactions. The most common one I found is going to be insects and bees, for example, why you'd carry an EpiPen with you. But the patient's going to be carrying this. And you're going to find that uh, some patients, you know, thankfully they have it on them, that can save lives. You take the pen and you basically go right inside here on the lateral part of the patient's thigh. Either side's good, but this is a huge chunk of muscle right here, and this is an intramuscular injection. It's BLS, okay? So that's your BLS epinephrine use, okay? Now over here on this side is gonna be our ALS epinephrine. Now, we move into ALS, well, here's why, okay? At the ALS level, we start drawing up meds, okay? This is my advanced EMTs. This is my paramedics over on here, okay? Also, here, now we start running cardiac arrests. We're going to talk about that, okay? Now, here's how, for the rest of your career, I want you to remember the one at 10,000 versus the one at 1,000 so you know it cold. Here it is. If I just walked up to you and said the following, here's epi, one at 10,000. Here is epi, one to 1,000, okay? And you just heard that. Just hearing that ratio, my friends, we all know that we cannot put more than two mLs into our arm up here. That's the most common place we're going to give this epi, right? Those little needle right here. So that's the way that I always remember one from the other. 
I'm not going to put this much, this much liquid, the cardiac arrest. Just look at it. Just by looking at the, I'll put the pictures here again. One at 10,000, one at 1,000. Just by looking at the way it's packaged, you'll know which one's IV versus which one's IM. Can I give you an example? I'm going to put on the screen here Haldol. Wait, how do we give Haldol? I am. Notice it comes the same way. Now, is this a rule with all drugs? No. But it's a way you can remember. Hey, we give Haldol in an ampule and it's I am. Hmm. Well, this epi comes in an ampule too. Hmm. Maybe it's I am too. And then the ratio, I'm not going to put this much liquid in someone's arm. That's how I always remembered it quick. Okay? Now, this epi over here, I'm going to tell you the dose. I put some. Uh, drip doses down here, but we'll do it at the end. So one of 10,000 epi for the adult patient is going to be one milligram IVIO at a cardiac arrest every three to five minutes. You're cycling your code, cardiac arrest, okay? Pediatric dose, 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram, okay? That's going to be your pediatric dose. Now, anytime I give you a dose here, they're always going to be a little different when you actually start working, but that's a pretty much a broad, you know, like national registry, broad AHA dose, okay? But remember, things can be slightly different when you start working like with drips and stuff, but this is pretty much gold standard stuff, okay? Over here now, we go to Epi 1 to 1,000, okay? The adult dose on that is gonna be 0 0.3 milligrams. Now, why are we giving it? Different reason. This is your respiratory Epi. Is it making sense now? Hang on. Remember earlier on, we said Epi has three different uses. Alpha-1, beta-1, beta-2. That's right. So hear me out here. Well, the cardiac arrest Epi, we're trying to bring that heart basically back to life. So we're using that vasoconstriction. We're using that increased contractility effect of Epi. Hopefully it works. With this epi over here, epi 1 to 1,000, why are we using it? Bronchodilation. Who has bronchodilation that are our patients? AAC, asthma, anaphylaxis, and even COPD, right? Yeah. So this is where we're going to use our respiratory epi. And if you can't remember, let's go like this. Then you'll always remember, okay? Now, with the uh, epi 1 and 1,000, that respiratory epi, okay, you got to remember that the dosing is different. One way I always remembered it is that this is the bigger epi. One milligram is bigger than 0 0.3. That's a, I'm trying to make sure I hit this home for you because you don't want to, it's, it's such an easy question here. I don't want you to mess it up, okay? So there we are there. And the pediatric dose for the IM epi, depending on where you work, you could follow this, that 0.15. You could also use the 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram dose and go that way. I've done both. The main thing to remember is you're not going to give a child this, okay? But anything under that realm should be good to go follow your local protocol, okay? But on a test question, you want to be around that realm, okay? Now, what's this down here? What's an epi drip? Why would we use an epi drip on somebody? I don't know. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? So here it is. So the epi drip, what you would do for this is this is for your patients that are hypotensive, okay? And yes, even patients who are bradycardic. Beta 1 for bradycardic. And then what about for the alpha 1? Beta constriction. There it is, okay? Pretty cool. So here's some doses the adult dose here, 2 to 10 mics a minute here, and 0 0.1 to 2. Uh, micrograms per kilogram per minute could be a proper pediatric dose. When's the time you would use this? I'll give you another one. Could be septic shock. It's a very, very common thing with your patient. Remember, when a patient is in septic shock, they don't have that sympathetic tone. Meaning, when let's say right now I'm in septic shock right now. My body cannot compensate like I can in a hypovolemic event. Essentially, when I'm in septic shock, I lose 
my sympathetic nervous system to my vasculature and my my you know my vasculature basically is like this so my blood pressure goes straight down i have no compensation there i lose that that's why we give an epi drip to septic so we gain that back with the drug because if we don't have it naturally you with me pretty cool okay good let's move on my friends if you are one of these three people if you are someone who's preparing for school whether it's EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, you're in school right now and you're trying to get this stuff down cold, or you're somebody right now who is studying for national registry exams, click the link down below in the description. I've created a 180 plus video study course that goes over all of that from pre-EMT all the way to your first year as a practicing paramedic out in the field. From all that range, Click the link down below in the description. You can grab that. Also comes with our private student group. So you are not alone studying. You have an entire network of students in the paramedic coach course, just like you. And we all have your back. So my friends, hope you enjoyed our epinephrine uh, lecture today. And I'll see you on the inside. Take care. See you next time. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school, from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need, to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. I went through it. I, I spent the time and money in other areas. And I'm, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, when I noticed it, it just, I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. If you're looking for a different way to, to learn and absorb the content um, in, a, in a non threatening way, um, in, a, in a caring way, then I would absolutely recommend the program.